So the project I'm working on right now is a simple machine project and it is a project for my brother-in-law. He needs some mounts on the side of a rack that will have a bar that will stick out much like this that will be able to swing to the side out of the way um, and pop back in and fit in a detent so that it doesn't move. It's got to hold fairly lightweight bulky objects that are going to stick out from his, uh, his uh, storage rack. So um, one of the holes is for a through quarter 20 bolt and the other one is for a uh, spring-loaded ball bearing uh, device that will uh, snap in and uh, catch and hold it in place. So I'm not going to show you all the drilling because you've seen lots of drilling. Um, I drilled and reamed these because I want them to be fairly close. This one's a press fit, so I drilled and reamed to 0.249. This uh, is for a quarter 20, I did 0.249 because I wanted to be a closer fit. Uh, most of the uh, quarter 20s I measured were 0 0.248, 0 0.247, 0.246. So that should leave a little clearance. I should be able to get it in. And uh, um, I am using a vice stop to set things up so I can do multiples uh, just to speed things up. So I need to drill some more holes in this guy. I've got a couple mounting holes that will go here for the rack itself. Um, up high, and then I've got a uh, quarter 20, well, yeah, th this one's going to be another .249 hole up here, and then a detent hole, just a little hole that will be somewhat smaller than the diameter of the ball bearing to catch the ball bearing right down here. And um, I will bring you back because one of the interesting parts of this project um, is going to be making this part round in the back here uh, on each one of these. Uh, the reason for that is because there will essentially be a flat surface here and you want to be able to rotate this 180. So uh, I didn't want to have a big gap behind it, so I need to make it uh, circular instead. So I'm going to do a 0.5 radius, 0.5 inch uh, uh, diameter circle, I'm sorry, radius uh, on the back of this guy so that it can rotate. I'm also going to leave a tenth of an inch uh, space so that uh, in case the rack is uh, wavy or whatnot. Uh, so I will bring you back for that part because that's something I've never done before on the rotary table. You might find it interesting. I don't think drilling holes is going to be overly exciting. So uh, I will bring you right back. So one interesting part of the setup for uh, drilling these angled piece, I needed to support the front of this, even though it was in the vise, just so, I, so that it wouldn't be pushed down by the drill. So I used one of my uh, Starrett adjustable parallels. I don't know if you can see that great in there and uh, set the height exactly and it's supporting one side. Um, the vise is pretty tight so I think it all should be fine. So I just got to drill and ream two holes here. So in order to round off the ends of these I need to mount them to something and I don't want to mount them directly here because I need to, to machine them in such a way that I can uh, cut all the way through. So I'd have to space them up off this which I could do but then finding the center might be a little tricky. So I want to use my mini pallet. So in order to get the mini pallet centered, what I've got over here is a Morse taper that fits the center and something I machined here, a, uh, a, a straight piece of material that the mini pallet fits on very closely. So now all I have to do is uh, get these guys in screw it down and it will be very close to perfect center. Now it could be off by a thousandth or two but this is not a critical operation. Yeah, if it was then uh, I would have to be even more careful still but I think all will be fine the way I've got it. So what I did was I had to lube this because this was a bit sticky and I was going to have a hard time getting it out. Uh, so I used some Vactra on it. So for starters, to rough in the position of this guy to get my zeros uh, to get the spindle centered on the center of the uh, table, um, there is a pip in the middle of this from turning it. And so I've just got a, a pin in here loosely. I think I probably should tighten a little bit. But just to rough it in to get it close, I've got the uh, pin going down lined up with the center of the pip. Next, uh, we'll be using a centering tool. All I'll right, so I located, my, I put my center finder in, and I haven't touched anything since I found the pip. So let's see how close we were. 
the scale is roughly half a thousandth per. So it looks like we're off by just a couple thousandths. So let me dial that in. Okay, so there's about half a thousand. So now, in order to get the center of the quarter 20 hole centered on the center of rotation to be the uh, center of the circle, I uh, took a piece of quarter 20 uh, bolt and I turned it to a point, and there is a pip in the middle of this to find the center, and this guy fits right down in it. So. Uh, I will be uh, using that to line this up in center and then I will do a half inch radius all the way around. So this is the first time I've used the mini pallet for the rotary table and uh, what I've discovered immediately is that uh, I do not have enough uh, threaded holes. And I actually thought I had more than enough but uh, the way they're spaced I can't actually get the clamps close enough. These are really mediocre. Um, not happy with them at all. So I'm going to have to take really light cuts on this. I, want, I can't risk actually putting any force because uh, this piece is not down hard enough. So, anyways, interesting discovery, live and learn. So I'm going to have to add some 10, more 1024 tapped holes in this guy uh, before I'm done to make this more useful. I'll just remember that. All right, so uh, let's set up to mill uh, mill out the round on the end of this, and we'll just go really gently. So. The final radius will be with the cutter right here. So, looking at this hole, this hole is 0 0.750 inches from the side. The cutter is 0.5 in diameter, so half of that is 0 0.250. So one inch from the center of this cutter to the center of this hole will be where I want my uh, 0.6 radius to be. And uh, so now I need to actually come out, because i got to take light cuts, so we got to come out until we just barely touch. And the way we can find that out is rotate this guy. And find out where it's just starting to touch. Which looks like I've got about 150 thousandths to come off. So let's just give it a shot real quick. So eventually we need to be at one inch. But, in the meantime, yeah, I know, a lot of stick out. So, 127 thousandths. So we're gonna do like, uh, I don't know, we'll try 20 thousandths. So, but we're engaging the entire cutter, so we really do need to take small bites. Fortunately, it's not a ton of material. Ah, uh, that's what I was afraid of. It moved. All right, so I've made some improvements. This guy, I actually could get this hole to work. It's uh, very close to the device, which is exactly what you want, the piece being clamped. Um, you want the angular part to be back to force most of the force to be down here. So this one's a much better clamp. The spacing is some tool steel, A2 tool steel I cut off. It's ground, so it's all equal to equal height. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take smaller bites. I'm only going to go off the top, get that all to dimension, then go a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper. Um, hopefully that'll work better. Um, but I've got some better clamping now. It's not great still, so... Uh, we will uh, see how this works. So I'm no longer going to try and bite the whole thing. That was just stupid. That was a mistake. So we're going to try and nibble at it. Like that. And we're going to move. This should be pretty close here to touching everything but the very center, which it looks like it did. So 
so Perfect. so 0. 0.6 was exactly to the edge so I went in another 25 thousandths to give myself some clearance and this is what it looks like a nice use for the rotary table this clamp actually is doing most of the work it seems so more holes I thought I had too many or enough definitely not next step is to barber push press these uh, ball bearing detents in and what I did was I tapped it in lightly uh, first to get it started and then we're going to come over here see if you can see this and press it in and that's it so I'm not sure whether this is the ball bearing size I'm going to ultimately end up with. I'm trying the small ones first, see if there's enough force. I think it will be, but if not, we will switch to some larger ones I ordered that I haven't received yet. I'll get them Monday. So here's the final assembly of the simple machine. The ball bearing goes down. This part aims back. So um, we've got a washer on top of a nylon washer and a nylon washer sandwiched and basically goes like this and then just tighten with a uh, nylon uh, captive nut here There's the action. So it'll be mounted on the shelving unit like this. This should be flush with the top of the shelving unit. The bolt will be a little bit proud, perhaps. They can bias it down if necessary. And it will stick out like this. Now, there's a huge lever arm here, as you can see. But uh, it's only to hold some bulky light items, I think sleeping bags or something like that, from rolling off the end. So they may even want to put something on the end of these to. Uh, prevent that uh, prevent things from rolling off but uh, there we are and I've made two of them here is the other one all with the leftover material except for the ball bearing detents and the nylon uh, bushing the nylon washers which uh, make it run smoothly all right thanks for watching I hope this was interesting and uh, hope to see you next time so here's the two supports in place and the first thing I noticed was that the dimensions he gave me was, were wrong, that it's not really three inch uh, width side, that it's actually closer to two and a half. Because I noticed they're hanging over the edges, drive me crazy. And here's the supports out. And the first shot was them folded back. And here is what he's putting up there. It turns out it's a Thule uh, top of car carrier, really light, just hollow plastic. And if it looks like they're flexing, they're actually not. It's just a wide angle lens. So that's my project. Hope you liked it and uh, wish the measurements were better, but <laughs> c'est la vie.